Well, once again, a very good evening and uh, just a warm welcome wherever you're tuning in from to our service here at Dingwall and Strathpeffer Free Church. We do trust that you'll be blessed in our time together as we seek the Lord's face and we hear from his word. Our call to worship this evening is from Psalm 91. Psalm 91. We'll sing to God's praise. dwelling is with God most high and the Almighty's shadow safe will rest He is my refuge I say of the Lord my fortress and my God in Him I trust Surely He saves you from the fowler's snare and rescues you from deadly pestilence Under his wings a refuge you will find His faithfulness will be your strong defense You will not fear the terror of the night Or dread the arrows in the day Stillance that in the darkness stalks, nor plague that carries all away. No harm will touch you, though a thousand fall, should ten thousand die at your right hand, your eyes will look. their ways to mend. But if you make God most high your dwelling place, yes, the Lord, who is my refuge, sure, no evil then will ever fall on you, nor calamity come near your door. charge his angels with your care to guide your footsteps on the way he has shown they will uphold and bear you in their arms lest you strike your foot against a stone upon Mighty lion, you will tread the cobra, you'll overcome and kill. Your feet will trample down the king of beasts, the serpent will be crushed beneath your heel. And because he loves me, says the sovereign Lord. I'll rescue and deliver him from harm Since he acknowledges my holy name I'll protect him with my mighty arm He'll call on me and I will answer him With him in troubled times I'll be salvation see long will he live and my salvation see the one whose dwelling is with God most high and the almighty shadow safe will rest he is my refuge I say of the Lord, my fortress and my God, in Him I trust. My 
my fortress and my God in him I trust. Our first reading this evening is from Exodus chapter 25, verses 23 to 30. Make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Also make around it a rim, a handbreadth wide, and put a gold molding on the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of arcasia wood, overlay them with gold and carry the table with them. And make its plates and dishes pure gold as well as its pitchers and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be before me at all times." And our second reading this evening is from Leviticus chapter 24, verses 5 to 6. Leviticus 24, verses 5 to 9. Take the finest flour and bake 12 loaves of bread, using one-fifth of an ipa for each loaf. Arrange them in two piles, six in each pile, and on the table, pure gold before the Lord. By each pile... Put some pure incense as a memorial proportion to represent the bread and to be a food offering presented to the Lord. The bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath, on behalf of the Israelites, as a lasting covenant. It belongs to Aaron and his sons who are to eat it in the sanctuary area because it is the most holy part of their perpetual share of the food offerings presented to the Lord." And we have a final reading this evening from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 43 down to 51. Stop grumbling among yourselves, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the Father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. May God bless that reading of his holy and inspired word to us this Lord's Day. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you this evening for your holy word. We thank you for all that we learned this morning about Jesus' power and authority. And we come before you with confidence through our Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, that because he has all power and because he has all authority, he can do all things. We come before you and we give you thanks for his uh, sacrifice. We give you thanks for his death and his resurrection through whom which we have fellowship with you and with one another. We do pray, Lord, on this Lord's Day that you would help us as we unpack your holy word, as we continue to study the the furniture of the tabernacle, that you would give us insight and understanding to help us to comprehend the depths of what it was the Lord Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. And so as we study the uh, table um, of the presence this evening, we ask um, that Jesus would be present with us. In his name we pray. Amen. We're now going to sing together once more from Psalm 32, verses 1 to 5. To God's praise.
Sometimes a piece of furniture in a person's home has a particular story uh, attached to it. Perhaps you know of someone who has an item of furniture in in their home and it it provides some uh, sentimental value to them. It's important to them because it reminds them of something or someone. Well, tonight we're going to be continuing our series in uh, looking at the Old Testament tabernacle, considering how um, God desired to be present with his people. And as we've been studying its various um, treasures, we've been learning how God was um, showing the Israelites how he desired to dwell with them, but that there were certain barriers between the people and between God, which he must take care of. And how one way or another, the furniture in the tabernacle actually pointed the Israelites towards uh, the coming Messiah, who would make a great sacrifice on their behalf. And tonight we're looking at the... um, what's called the golden table. And we're not so concerned with the table itself, but more with what was actually put on the table, namely the bread of the presence. And the big idea this evening is is very simple. Um, The bread of the presence represents Jesus. The bread of the presence represents the coming Messiah. And it reveals God's providential care for his people and his provision for them through Christ Jesus. God was indeed present with his people continually in the desert. And he actually provided food for them, manna from heaven. And God is still present with his people today and continually provides for them by giving them Jesus Christ. So tonight we're going to unpack this truth as we consider three things. We're, cons- we're going to consider firstly the, the function of the table uh, and the bread in the tabernacle. Secondly, we're going to consider what was, what was on the table in addition to the bread. And thirdly, we're going to consider, well, what actually happened at the table. So just a a quick uh, recap of the tabernacle. There should be a wee image coming up on screen. That just gives you an idea of the layout of the tabernacle. Uh, And as you can see, there's the outer courtyard there with... um, with, with the bronze altar of burnt offering. And then the week after that, we looked at the, the, the bronze lavalier on the outside of the court. And now we are entering into what was called uh, the holy place. Not the most holy place, but the holy place. We're, we're now coming into the, the actual tent part of the tabernacle itself. And as we arrive here, the, the furniture begins to get um, more precious. It's now made of gold. And you'll see that the, the table of the bread of the presence there is, is located just opposite the golden menorah and just before the curtain and the gold incense of offering. So what was the function of the table firstly? What was it actually for? Well, its function was one of remembrance. That's what it was about. It was was, uh, to help the Israelites remember. Firstly, remembrance of the covenant, the promise that God had made with Israel. Now, after making a a covenant agreement in the ancient world, it wasn't uncommon for people to sit down and have a meal together, to have fellowship together, to eat and to drink in one another's presence. And so this, this table served as a reminder of that table fellowship with God, a reminder of God's covenant agreement with Israel, that God would come and be their God and that they would be his people. Exodus 24 verses 9 and 11, we're told that Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Ibihu and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. And under his feet was something like a pavement made of lapis lazuli, as bright blue as the sky. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God, they ate and they drank. This is truly a unique time in Israel's history. So it was one of of remembrance of the the covenant relationship that, that Israel had entered into with God and the fellowship its leaders had with God up on the mountain. But the second remembrance it functioned as was a remembrance of God's gracious provision. Because after all, they were traveling through through the desert for 40 years and God provided, we're told, manna from heaven, literally bread that came down from heaven every day in order to feed his people. 
God sustained them. God kept them. God uh, filled them. And God attended to all of their needs. They never went hungry in all their time in the desert because God fed them bread from heaven. And the table reminded them of these two facts. So that was the function of the table. Secondly, what was actually on the table? Well, Exodus 25, verses 29 says, And make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls, for the pouring out of offerings. We read of three different types of containers made of of gold. We read of plates on which... uh, plates on which the the bread of the presence was to be laid as a grain offering. And and the purpose of a grain offering was really to just give thanks to God for his provision for food. There were bowls in which was to be put uh, pure frankincense as an accompaniment offering. Now, um, this bread actually had to stay on the table for nearly a whole uh, week. And you can imagine in in the, the hot, dry desert, that it would easily go off and perhaps moldy. And so frankincense was added as a, as a preservative um, uh, to keep the bread fresh all the time. And then there were pitchers and jars for the pouring out of drink offerings. And these were called libations. And they were basically offerings that accompanied the burnt offerings on the, on the bronze altar. Um, and so for different sacrifices on, on, on altars, different types of wine was poured out uh, for each lamb that was, was sacrificed. Now, um, we've, we've mentioned where the table was, but it, it was close to the presence of God, which is why it was called the bread of the presence. And the light of the menorah would actually shine down onto the table, indicating the presence of God. So... We've uh, considered the function of the table. We've considered what was on the table. Thirdly, now let's consider what happened around the table. What, w- what was the process involved? Well, fresh bread was, was prepared just before every Sabbath, which was the Saturday back then. Bread wa- was baked and prepared. And according to the original commandment, it never failed to appear at the appointed place of God's worship. So every Sabbath, one of the sons of the family of Aaron would go and they would replace uh, the old bread and the wine offerings that symbolized God's covenant agreement with Israel. And here's perhaps the most important takeaway for us tonight, the, 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 the thing to think about the most, is that the bread and the wine was consumed by the priests. The bread and the wine was consumed. Leviticus 24, 9, which we read earlier, says, It belongs to Aaron and his sons, who are to eat it in the sanctuary area, because it is the most holy part of their perpetual share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. So, the the bread and the wine was to be consumed. Now, usually... The pouring out of drink offerings called libations occurred on the bronze altar outside in the courtyard. There were bronze pitchers for that very purpose. But we're told in the Bible that the golden jars of wine that were on this table were not to be poured out on any altar. They were to be consumed by the priests. Uh, And of course, not, not the containers, but the wine which because you get a sore throat if you ate a container. Um, but the wine was to be consumed by the priests. Exodus 39 is clear. Do not offer on this altar any other incense or burnt offering or grain offering, and do not pour a drink offering on it. Now that's referring to the golden altar that's on the inside of the tabernacle, not the burnt altar that's on the outside. M. Haran comments on this. He says, The wine from the holy place was not actually poured out on any altar. It was apparently consumed by the male priests in a holy place, just as were the loaves of the showbread. So here you have a table. A table which reminds God's priests of the covenant that God made with Israel. And we also see that the priests are to present the bread and the wine as an offering before God. Yet strangely, 
They are not to put them on the golden altar, as you might expect. But rather, they are to actually eat the bread. And of course, you're looking at a picture possibly on the screen there of of very thick loaves of bread, but it would have been possibly much thinner because it would have been unleavened bread containing no yeast. Still, a lot of bread to consume. They had to consume the bread, and they had to consume the wine which was a reminder of God's gracious provision. Now, this is, this is quite remarkable because it teaches us that the bread and the wine were not necessarily there for God's sake, as if God needed to eat, as if God needed to drink, but rather the bread and the wine being offered to God on the Sabbath was for the benefit of the priests themselves, And this is absolutely crucial for our understanding of the Sabbath as God's day of refreshment and rest for humanity. Remember that Jesus, he was criticized for picking grain on the Sabbath. The the Pharisees were absolutely furious with Jesus for seemingly breaking what they saw as the law in their eyes. Mark 2, 25 to 27, he answered, Jesus answered him, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need in the days of Abiathar, the high priest? He entered the house of God. This is the tabernacle at this time. He entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread. Remember the bread that's only lawful for the priests? And Jesus says, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Jesus' illustration, then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, today as Christians, we don't bring grain offerings of bread to God as if he needed our food. We may give thanks to God, sometimes we call them harvest services and things, but we don't bring bread before God as if God needed to consume bread. We don't pour out wine offerings to God because we believe that the ultimate offering was fully and finally made on our behalf when Jesus offered his, his, his body, his bread, and poured out his blood, his wine on the cross, events never ever to be repeated. And as a true and greater priest, the bread that Jesus brought was his own broken body. The drink offering, the libation, was his own precious blood poured out for the forgiveness of his people's sin. He is the table. The table represents Jesus. He is that place of fellowship with God. Jesus is the bread. Jesus is the wine. And Jesus is also the frankincense, which not only serves as a a preservative, but a pleasing aroma before God. As we learned in previous weeks, Jesus is the altar. Jesus is the lavalier, the sink. Jesus is also the golden table. Jesus is also the bread and the wine. And just as the golden table reminded the priests of God's covenant, when we participate as Christians in communion, when we come to the table, we now remember the new covenant that was made in Christ's blood. Luke twenty two nineteen to 20, and he took bread and gave thanks and he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do you see it this evening? Do you see it? 
The, the table calls us to, to remembrance of God's covenant. The bread, the wine, reminding us of God's gracious provision for us as we consume it. And Jesus then said, I am the bread of life. You will never read this passage in the same way again when you study the table of the bread of the presence. And Jesus says, don't work for for bread that is, is perishing. In Jesus, the bread of life, we have the bread of the presence of God. It's it's bread that will never go off. It's bread that will never go stale. It is the bread of the presence. And in Him, our provisions are met both for our eternal salvation and for our ongoing sustenance. In Jesus, the bread of life, we have all that we need. Now, it's really important to remember, as we've said in previous weeks, that the tabernacle itself was was a copy. It was a shadow, a copy of something that exists in heaven. Moses was to construct it according to a heavenly blueprint. And just as the presence, the bread of the presence sat in the very presence of God in the tabernacle, so Christ, the bread of life, is seated today at the right hand of God, making intercession for God's people. So, there's a, a challenge today to those listening at home thinking, this is all sounds very complicated. In many ways, it's, it's, let me simplify the message for you, what we're about as Christians. We Christians are like beggars trying to tell people that we found bread. We found bread that leads to everlasting life. And Jesus is that bread. Do you have the bread of life? Because Without Jesus, without the bread of life, without God's provision of fresh daily bread, the Bible says that you will perish. Without bread, you're dead. It's just a fact of life. We need bread to, um, to fill us. We need bread for sustenance. We need bread for, for strength. And if we don't eat, we perish, we die. And Jesus offers us living bread that would cause us to live forever. Without the bread of the presence, which God provides for his people, you will perish away from the presence of God. Because God is the source of all life. You cannot live without him. Remember a number of years ago, I was, um, I was up at my friend Joe Bernard's house, and he had, had two boys, and uh, they were building a fort and a den, and one of them was showing me what he was doing and he was sitting up on a branch and he's, he's sawing through the branch and I'm thinking to myself, I don't think he knows what he's doing there. He's, he's cutting off the very branch that he's sitting on. And it's like that with God. If you cut God out of your life, if you reject God, well, he's the source of all life. You're cutting off the very branch you're sitting on. Without bread, you are dead. For God so loved the world, we're told in John's gospel, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And the challenge to those of you who are believers this evening, to those of you who follow Christ and know Christ, are you regularly feeding on the bread of life? Because without the bread of life, you will grow weak, you will grow malnourished. And every day, you need to walk with Jesus because without the bread of life, you are a sitting duck for temptation. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. My bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. You see, Jesus is the table. Jesus is the bread of the presence. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is indeed good. Come to the table this evening. Come to the bread of life. Come to Jesus while the invitation is still open. Because one day you may go looking for living bread. 
and you may not be able to find it. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Come to the bread of life. Amen. We are now uh, going to conclude this evening, this evening's service with uh, singing, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. To God's praise. If you're able to at home, please do stand for the benediction. Now may grace, mercy, and peace go with us all forevermore. Amen.